I started the rumor that I'm a Gibson hater, but I was actually joking. I love Gibson guitars. And to prove it, here's a video of me performing with a Gibson Les Paul five years before I started this YouTube channel. Okay, the truth is my Parker string broke 30 seconds before I went on stage, so I borrowed that guitar from a friend. But seriously, although Gibson isn't the brand I'm most interested in, I've also never given their guitars an extended try. But that changes in season three of the experiment, the series where I explore a single gear category in extreme detail over an extended period of time. I'm buying a Gibson guitar with my own money, making it my primary instrument, and trying really, really hard to fall in love with it over the course of 100 hours of use. In other words, after 19 years of studying guitar, it's finally time to play authentic. I'm Andre Flood, and welcome to episode one of The Gibson Experiment. Which of the three do you like, mystery girl? The one you're holding. Out of these three, you like this one the best? Yeah. Why? Um, I don't really like the matte finish on the other ones. I like the shiny Oh well, yeah, so this is, this is a gloss, and then these are yeah. either satin or poly finish, so they're not shiny. Yeah, I think I'm a gloss kind of girl. Interesting. In this first episode, I'm going to show you the process I went through when purchasing my first Gibson SG. I chose an SG because I've played Les Pauls in the past, and I owned a VGA GV Wood, and there's no way any Gibson in my price range could possibly compete with that guitar. So I wanted a completely fresh palette for this experiment. Moreover, many viewers have suggested that I probably like an SG more than Les Paul, and I listen to comments. <laughs> say so far I'm not loving this one because the gloss finish my hand is already sticking to it and it's really uh, slowing me down even when playing chords Nothing jumps out at me. Nothing negative, apart from the gloss kind of sticking, but nothing negative, but also nothing very positive. So we're gonna try some others now. On this one, we have a Trem, a Vibrola. Research tells me that this isn't going to be the best system to stay in, that stays in tune very well, but I didn't want to just judge it without trying it first. And ideally, I'd be able to set it up my own way, but just for today, we'll give it a try. This one has a satin finish or a poly finish. I'm not exactly sure which, but point being, it's not gloss, so it's a lot smoother. Everything else feels about the same, though. Mm. And these pickets are definitely a little darker, which I prefer. It feels kind of like a slightly stiffer Bigsby, but stiffer in a nice way. Try to bridge pickup. Yeah, I like these. I don't know if these are the same pickups. Or not. I don't like to look at that stuff, I just like to try it. But I can say, might be the pickup height, might be how it's set up, might be the wood, who knows, might be the bridge, but I like these pickups so far a lot more than I like the gloss finish ones pickups. Gentle use, let's just check the tuning. Good, good, good. D's a little off. Good. I don't know, people online said that these don't stay in tune, but that little bit of just gentle, normal Bixby style use, it was stayed in tune pretty well. Let's go a little bit more aggressive this time. Out. The D is very out. So 
So it looks like the D string is the biggest culprit here. But no, this is a graph tech nut, so it shouldn't be the nut. Yeah, again, it's the D string. A, E. Man, that's a shame. Well, I can say that I love the way it feels. It just has a really nice tone to it. And the way the arm feels is the way I like my arm to feel. So it's not hard to manipulate, but it's also not too warbly. Well, I wanted to try this one because I know that I need a tremolo bridge. And I didn't want to just assume that this wouldn't stay in tune just because it said so online. But I can tell you, at least from this quick check, it probably isn't going to be the best choice for someone like me who likes to use the trem pretty much all the time. So. Now, before anyone gets mad at me and says, I didn't really try this bridge in the real way, yes, I totally understand, but you can't go to a guitar shop, take off the string, set it up your own way and experiment for hours. Plus, I've done a lot of research on this bridge already and I can't find anyone who says that it's extremely reliable. So this is going to have to do for now, but who knows, maybe I'll purchase it and continue with the testing. If you'd like to support this channel and help me keep it 100% unbiased, give this video a like and share it with a friend. And if you can, also consider checking out my Patreon linked below. To be 100% honest, this is more my aesthetic. That the natural wood tone, you know, red is not too crazy of a color, but I like a nice wood color guitar when I can get one. The one thing about this is that the, there's no binding on the neck. So there's binding on this neck, which just makes it even more comfortable. There's no binding on this neck. But there's no sharp fret, fret edges, so no complaints from me. This is the ugliest guitar. You think this is ugly for real? <laughs> it looks like, like a broom. broom. No oh. offense. strings are off the neck so I can't play it very well right now but I like I like this actually the body's nice and thin the neck feels fairly fat I didn't think it was gonna be this fat and it's just really understated what did you say it looks like a broom or like a cutting board do I get this one because I think it's really cool and it sounds good and all of that stuff, or do I really put Gibson to the test and buy the one with the Vibrola and see if I can get it to work? Because I like the way the Vibrola sounds and feels, but do I want to go through the headache of trying to make this stay in tune, or do I just want to get this one and mod it myself? Did you want a box for this? The no. box for it? We're take it just like this. Okay. Jump right back on the train. Cool. Who knows which one it is? <laughs> 